Hello friends, thank you for joining me again today. My name is Dan. Maybe you know that. Am I all plugged in? I think I am. No, I am not. Hang on. Bear with me just a minute. Alright, good enough. I'm going to proceed anyway. Daily Eye Adventure number 638. Adding. <laughs> Adding. <laughs> um, abstract figures to your paintings. So this, this could be a good episode for anybody who is essentially a landscape painter. But you'd like to add some of those critical psychological focal points not not necessarily visual focal points but psychological focal points to your painting how to go about doing that so this is a painting I started last Sunday it's a wedding painting uh, a home wedding older bride and groom just great fun nice change and uh, the place was packed with people and for some reason <laughs> in my blind spot I I didn't include any any people in the painting <laughs> in the acrylic underpainting stage. So, so unfortunately, I'm having to add all of these figures rather late in the process. But let's walk through this together. Now, the question is how how much do I want these figures to encroach on? you know the space the bride's space in particular I'm going to talk in just a minute about the marks that I'm putting down right now but before we begin that so how close to the groom maybe there all right let me I'm going to get a piece of paper and talk for just a minute about just one little quick way to, to think about it. Take a good in a good font an exclamation point. Right? Look something like that. You with me? But then move the dot up here. So if you can remember that many of you that's where you should start that is a figure and I'm gonna make a couple of modifications to that real quickly this one is very important so if there's something very bad about this in my drawing classes one of the things I do is I, I almost require that my students raise their hand repeat after me I solemnly swear solemnly swear that I will never, I will never draw a balloon head. Draw a balloon head. Ever again. Ever again. For as long as I live. As long as I live. So help me God. <laughs> so help me God. I would like you to, I hope you do that with me. I do solemnly swear that I will never draw a balloon head. As long as I live. Ever again. So help me God. Okay. What do you want to draw? The answer is you want to draw a black head. Better yet, a brick head. What I'm, what I'm getting at, and I'm going to get a little bit too detailed, but instead of drawing in, in the abstract realm, don't draw a circle, don't even draw an egg, even though that's a reasonable facsimile, but we're in a hurry. Uh, no, these are both disastrous mistakes. Instead, draw your head like a brick. Okay, so now our figure is an exclamation point where we took the dot off the bottom, put it at the top, but instead of making it a balloon head, because you do solemnly swear that you will never ever for the rest of your life. Why? Because this is a disastrous way to start a human head. 
this is easily modified. This is so much closer, whether the person's facing us or in profile, either one. This is better in this level of abstraction than, than a dot. Okay, so that's lesson number one, exclamation point. And can, do, do these connect? Yeah, sometimes. If they're connected, that head's a little bit too big for this body, so let me make the body bigger. If they're connected, you, you tend to get the impression the person's facing away from us. If they're disconnected, it looks more like the person is facing toward us. Because when you're a person is toward us, there's a big break here. When they're facing away from us, there's not a big break. <laughs> My hair and collar, but anyway. Um, um, so that, that's step number one. Some of you say, well, I thought we had two legs, not three. <laughs> that is not what you said. You said, I thought we had two legs, not one. Yes, but if you draw this, as some of you are thinking, that's worse than this. And, and boy, I, I do, I, I go into great detail when I teach this this anatomy class, and I don't, I don't have room in here. Do I even have room in the, in my office? Barely here. Let me. I mean, I, I have to act this out here a little bit. Forgive me. I have to go way over here in my crowded studio. When you draw that that two-legged thing, like some of you were saying, here's what you're drawing. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> no, that is not how people stand. Only, only. Fess Parker, <laughs> Black Eyed Joe, I'm calling you out. <laughs> That's the only time people stand like that, unless they're they're all still up, as they say in Texas, unless they're all arthritic and old, wore out. If that's the kind of person you're drawing, then by all means, do that two-legged thing. Otherwise, this is how people stand, and in, in extreme abstraction, that condenses to one shape, not two. All right, I'm getting in way too deep, but there you go. There's a free. Um, something is going on. With, let's check that again. That is very strange. Oh, there we go. We're better now. Hang on just a second. So there was something wrong with my sound all that time. Let's check it now. Let's check it now. All right. I know you could hear me, but it wasn't very good sound. Sorry about that. Plugged in all the way. I, I keep inventing new ways to screw up. But I keep inventing then new ways to get better at this broadcast business. Sorry about that. All right. So let's let's now go back to my initial. You'll see I'm starting with dark. Dark, transparent ghosts, blobs. Doesn't matter what color, this happens to be oxide red, mostly oxide red and ultramarine. So if you're painting a number of people in your paintings, which I know many of you are not going to be doing a number of people, but some of you might. And since that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm going to teach you how to do. Number one, one of the first lessons you have to learn is be careful not to do soldiers on parade. In other words, not to have all the people e equally spaced. In a normal, random crowd, people do not arrange themselves evenly. It's a hodgepodge, okay? So that's, if you're taking notes, that's, that's a note. Beware soldiers on parade. Number two, in the, in, in, at this level, beware of Soldiers, period. Let me show you what a soldier is. <laughs> the guard at Buckingham Palace. So be careful not to do people that are standing up straight. Because generally people, generally speaking, people are in motion. Now the best, and I, this is one of, this is a weakness. I, keep, I still screw up this one. Um, my, my, the best way for me to, to escape that is to put the head, you see that head, at an angle, and then put the shoulders at the other angle, and then the hips at a third angle. Boom, boom, boom. The classic S 
shape of the spine in the human figure. Um, here, hang on just a second. I'm, I didn't think about this, but this would be a good time. Let me see if I can find this. This is Jack Ham, one of the best uh, figure drawing books ever written. And I'm hoping, there we go. All right. So this is changes of direction in the figure. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. He does more of it. Yeah. More over here. Boom, boom, boom. Um, more here. Boom, boom, boom. The head goes one way, the shoulders go the other. Here's another. Here's more. You see the, the curve of the figure, the swoop of the, it's generally an S curve. The head goes one way, the shoulders go the other, the hips go the third. And here you say, here's the right and the wrong way. Here's where, you, where if you do it, the hips and the, and the shoulders going the wrong direction. So, I mean, let me just give you the, the quick, quick, again, the, all of these pages are dealing with, with, here it is again, are dealing with this, this subject. And I know I'm flying through this. This is Jack Ham drawing the head and figure, one of the best figure drawing books ever published. Let me go back to, to my strategy then. So I'll, I'll repaint this person because I, head at an angle, then shoulders at an opposite angle, and then hips at third angle, and then legs can go splayed from there. But here again, here's, I did, I did explain, here, head at an angle, shoulders at an angle, and now this person is looking, it looks like a uh, profile to us. Here's one. Okay, so be careful not to make all, in fact, <laughs> better not to make any of your figures standing up straight, but be careful not to make too many of them standing up straight. Again, like the guard at Buckingham Palace. Instead, again, here's a head at an angle. Now, if the, if, if the head and the shoulders are going the same angle, then that's a dynamic pose. That is, that's someone in motion, which is, again, a very believable um, situation. So let me look here now and see if I've got the right number of people in the painting. The, the house was packed. So it would be a little bit ironic for me to give the bride and groom a painting with nobody in it. <laughs> so I'm glad, glad I caught this. I'm just, I'm just fleshing out, if you will, some of these figures that I, I focused on, the, the top part of their figure, but didn't do anything with the bottom. So let's just take them, you know, bring them all the way to the floor. That's probably enough people. So I have roughly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, regular, approximately. Now, by the way, the, the old adage, the old rule, you should always have an odd number, that rule runs out over, say, seven, or at least nine, but it doesn't count anymore. I don't know if you know that rule. You should have odd numbers of things. That is a general rule of thumb. Every rule can be broken. You just have to know when to break it. And one of the answers is if you have more than, if we're talking numbers of more than nine, then it doesn't count anymore. You don't have to worry about odd even, but there do happen to be but I'm counting on the sides too, so there's 13 across the front. All right. Now, just again, forgive me. This, I normally do this level of abstraction in the acrylic stage, the acrylic phase. Alas and alack, I forgot to put people in this painting. I talked about that in the last episode. I won't repeat it here. Much to my undying shame, I forget to put people in my painting sometimes. <laughs> it's an extrovert's view of the world. I mean, an introvert, sorry. It's an introvert's view of, of a perfect world wouldn't have any people in it. And I'm very much kidding. I'm certainly glad there are people. All right, so I'm now mixing up a dark flesh tone. And I'm just going to put a, a blob. If, if they're facing toward us, then then... Then I put a, a blob. Uh, if they're if they're profile, then I put a blob of light. You know, on this side of their face, like this person is facing this way. This person actually should be facing that way too. So let me change that. Okay. I want this person facing pretty much straight toward us. Uh, this person here, I think you can hardly see. And these two people both. Um, looking to our left. So these people as well, looking to our left, looking to our left, 
this person facing toward us. So I put the, the flesh color blob right in the middle. By the way, and I am I am actually being sensitive. Uh, be careful as white people, because I'm a white person. <laughs> be careful not to be racially insensitive uh, in this regard. So I love the, in the olden days when we were kids. You know, we had pencils in our in our Crayola crayon box called flesh. <laughs> Hi, right. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Right was at the wedding. Good to have you on on, on the broadcast, man. Um, yeah, I'm pre I'm pretty happy with this the way it is right now. All right, so that's that's a blob of flesh. I was talking about crayons, was I? How funny, how insensitive, how stupid. Um, I haven't looked at a box of crayons lately. I don't know what it's called now, but I'm sure it's not called flesh. Uh, anyway, as an artist, you, you be be sensitive. Um, now there were about two, three, four black people at this whole wedding, so you know I, I'm aware of that fact. But you do start with a dark flesh tone, dark-ish. Anyway, okay, same color. What what am I going to do next? Okay, watch this. Those are more or less those are heads, so it's starting to look like people. The next thing I'm going to do is hint at arms. Now, when when I talk about abstracting figures into your paintings. The word abstract is like, you know, it's a range from here to here, from extremely abstract, like like this that I was talking about earlier, extremely abstract, to quite realistic, just slightly fuzzy right around the edges. So there's a whole range. And right at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty far toward the abstract end of that spectrum. So let me give you a quick how-to tip for doing arms. The answer is I have this flesh colored paint on my brushes and I, I'm basically going to do X's X, X O Y across the torso chest part of those figures. Uh, I'll buy the, okay, there's a whole lot of things I'm not saying. This, what I'm doing right now, is not a full fledged lesson class on how to do abstract figures. I teach that. I love teaching it. This is not the whole thing. So I'm, there's a lot that I'm not saying. For instance, well, what if you're no good at drawing human beings to begin with? Oh, well, <laughs> everything I'm doing right now is kind of, um, no, no, you can't start here. You need to be able to, you need to do your homework. I mean, I'm just going to grab three books over here. I already showed you one. So you have to do you have to do your homework, and um, I'll be doing more abs I'll be doing more figurative paintings shortly. But here are the three here are the three biggies, three best books produced in the 20th century on figure drawing: George Bridgman, Jack Ham, and uh, Andrew Loomis. Those are the three monster anatomy masters of the last 100 years. There you go. So you you do your homework. I'm assuming then you've already done that. And beyond that, what do you do? Because I'm going to come back and do another application of messy strokes. That represents arms. Okay. Then a certain number of guests were women wearing dresses. So now I'm going to do legs. Anyone that I think is might be a woman, I'm going to give her legs. I think this is a woman. And this is the woman. Now they might be wearing a long dress, of course, and that's different. Okay, you can already begin to see people slowly emerging out of the mist, can't you? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm going to do the legs one more time. Mixing with a slightly lighter color. All right. Part of what you're watching me do here, right? This is the part that I really do want you to catch. I'm, I can't. I'm not going to try to teach everything about anatomy. Uh, that's for another time. 
but the part I would like you to catch in this broadcast is the magic of abstraction and the magic of looking for um, pictures in the clouds. Okay. Do you know what I mean by that when you're a kid? Hopefully still as an adult, you like to lie in the grass, hands behind your head, look up at the sky on a day where there's lots of fluffy cumulus clouds, and you all play, point to each other say, look, over there, it looks like an old man eating ice cream cone. Look, that looks like an elephant. Look, that looks like an alligator. Look, that looks like a puppy. Look, that looks like a clown. That's the game, pictures in the clouds. That's what I'm doing here. Same principle. I, I make such a mess. Not, uh, and all I've done intentionally, of course, here's what I've done intentionally, just to, to review. Number one, I did the exclamation point with a dot at the top turned into a brick. Okay, I did that. You saw me do that. And then I was careful to make sure they were not spaced evenly. And then I was careful to make sure that the heads and the shoulders were tilted. So that was three steps, right? Exclamation point with a brick head. Bricks are twisted, shoulders are twisted. And then I came back and did a dab of flesh on the face. If it's facing toward us, now if there's anybody facing away from us, you leave it dark. But with this arrangement, no, that everybody's either facing us or uh, facing toward the bright moon. Um, then the third thing I did was arms, just a mess of X, Y's, and Z's, X's, Y's, and Z's in the midriff section of their bodies. And then legs, messy, slightly vertical messes. So that, that, yeah, that was just a review. You with me? Next thing then, and again, I'm doing this all in acrylics. It would be more appropriate, more fun to do this. Um, I'm doing all this in oils. It'd be more appropriate to do in acrylics is what I'm going to say. All right, now I'm mixing up a pale blue. Why blue? Because that's a good average typical color and it's very 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 faint as you can see I'm putting it on very thinly um, because that's a good starting point for clothing not for everybody but for several of the figures yeah this 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 is the woman that, that calls for blue and again you can see that the manner in which I'm painting very loose very abstract very quick uh, two hands helps because if you paint with one hand, your brain can keep up with what one hand is doing. If, on the other hand, you paint with two hands, your brain can't keep quite keep up. So you're more likely to actually paint something interesting because your paint again because your hand can't keep up with two hands. Okay, can you see what's happening? I'm going to wipe these brushes off. I'm going to wash that paint right onto my brush. I'm going to wash. Just paint right on. Okay, next I'm going to do red. And I, honestly, usually I start with the color red, but just didn't want to this time. So again, a fairly dark. Um, just a little bit of white or Naples yellow in it, so it's a little bit opaque. And now I'm going to pick out my red people fairly carefully, because red really jumps out at you, as you know. Uh, just that, that, <laughs> that was a man. Until just then, it just got turned into a woman because I, I painted red all the way down there. There was no man wearing a full body red suit. Now, he, she might get turned back into a man. And I just want one other person in red, and I guess this person right there. That's enough. So can you see what's going on here? So little by little by little, Again, I'm, I'm playing picture in a clouds game with myself. After every layer, I'm, I'm going, oh, you know what? This kind of looks like a woman or a man doing this or that or thus and so. Um, I've got red and blue. I'm not going to do yellow. I could do green, purple, orange. I'm not going to do orange. Do green or purple. I'm going to do one purple person. That is to say, one, at least in the underpainting stage, I'm going to have at least one person that has a slight purple cast to their clothing just because of a variety. No, I changed my mind. I'm going to do two people. 
By the way, it's okay to go on top of something you did earlier. I'm assuming you understand that. Just because I did an underpainting in one color. I'm going to do a tiny bit of green and I'll be done with this layer, this stage, this phase of the operation. Just a little bit of green, a hint of green, and I think one person in green is enough. <laughs> That's my opinion. One person in green at the wedding, at this particular wedding, is plenty. one person around the edge over here. All right, now. I'm gonna start getting a little more serious. I'm gonna mix up a mid-tone, um, whatever the background is, and it's different colors in different places. So brown, warm brown, yellow, beige tan, I don't care what you call it. Fairly, fairly neutral color. Um, I'll zoom in here for just a second. See, th this person's head is way too big. Either it's a, a woman with an old-fashioned 1960s bun on top of her head, which is not. So I'm going to carve off. I've, I've mixed up a color that is very close to the, the, the background that was behind, behind this head. Does that make sense? Now, you notice I didn't make it all disappear made most of that disappear because that now gives me just a little bit of interest let's just move on over i'm going to add some oxide red let's just say brown called oxide red to this and do the same thing over here i'm going to shave this person's head down So at the moment, I'm shaving, carving, I shouldn't say shaving, I'm carving heads down, making them a little bit more realistic. Even though they were brick heads and not balloon heads, they were still a little bit too large. Um, that's too bright. Do you understand what I'm doing? I'm trying to match whatever color is behind each head. And I'm just coming in here and, and shaving the heads, making them look a little bit more realistic. Just very slightly. Not not getting not getting into any great detail yet at all. Sorry about my sound, folks. I'm not sure why it's doing it. But I'm not going to, I'm sorry. I'm going to take time to fix it. I think you can hear me almost well enough. Almost well enough. I'm going to keep these same brushes. We're going to wipe them off. Oops. There I did it, didn't I? I thought I won't I won't forget to zoom back out, but I did. Forgive me. There you go. I didn't do much. Um I'm going to uh, again just every step by step by step making making little um, progress, slow progress. Let the, let, the, let the image emerge slowly out of the mist. By the way, I, read, I glanced at some of your comments and uh, thank you for them. I'll, I'll respond to them more fully later. I've mixed up a, a dirty gray um, because I'm going to make some decision, a real important decision right now. That is which one, which of these figures are men and are wearing suits. I think there. I think I, I should have paid more attention. I think I think a s suit was the most 
coat and tie, I think, was pretty standard attire. There was a lot of not coats and ties, but uh, in the painting, again, I'd rather err on the side of formality than informality, if you know what I mean. It's just, you know, if you're going to go one way or the other. And it doesn't mean, of course, that some of the women here couldn't have white down the front of their blouse or shirt or whatever, of course. But that's, that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm, and as you can tell, that's a very dirty, dirty gray. I, I don't want it to get um, too bright yet at all. But can you see the, you, you can, can't you? You can see the figures just starting to emerge little by little by little. And they're, they are, they're not all stiff. They're interesting positions. Now I think I'm ready to come back and start making decisions about arms and hands. Of course, now if a man is wearing a suit coat or a sport coat, his hands won't be showing. If he's wearing short sleeves, then yes, of course, his hands are showing. Women were typically, um, especially in the summer, will have arms showing, thus the little bit of light, it's, it's, it's a little lighter colored flesh tone than, than I was using earlier. So I'm assuming that you know what I mean when I say the up uh, pictures in the cloud trick I'm, I'm looking at the marks that are already here and looking for things that look like figures things that look like in this case that look like arms while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and look for things that look like dresses so it's becoming a little more obvious which which of these people are wearing dresses and and which are not I'm changing my mind there. I don't think that's a, I think I don't think those little legs should be there. So the next thing that's coming out here very shortly is um, dark. Back to dark again. Two legs there. All right. So I don't have to decide everything all at once. And I hope those of you early in your in your paint journey, you're going wow. I never thought about doing figures like that because you'd be all tight and thinking carefully and start rendering your, your figures early, early on in the process, mostly because you're nervous. So if I can get you over that nervousness, just relax. Let it emerge slowly. It ain't done till it's done. And until it's done, it ain't done. <laughs> Thank you, Yogi Berra. All right, so now I've got Again, dark, neutral, dark on my brushes, and and I and and I don't have to decide again. I don't have to decide everything all at once. This right here, to me, now I just saw again playing pictures in the clouds. I just saw a man, and he's wearing a tie, and he's he's leaning over at a nice angle. I'm covering up the blue that was there. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna make the his the what was his hands is too big. I didn't know if that was a man or a woman earlier. And down here I had the su suggestion of flesh-colored legs. Nope, cover that up. Now those are, that's a man wearing a suit. And here's another man wearing a suit, but he's facing uh, the bride and groom. So can you see that now I'm, I'm actually covering up some of the earlier stuff but that's right because I, I just used I use every step of the process as as an excuse for for making a mess so that I can see figures so I can find figures you have to make enough of a mess that for instance the the, the pictures in the clouds game um, 
We don't play that game on a day when there's no clouds. We don't play that game on a day when there's cirrus clouds. You have to know what cirrus clouds are, I guess. But, you know, the soft, wispy... No, no, we only play that game when there are cumulus or cumulonimbus clouds in the sky. There has to be a, a, a moderate degree of compl visual complexity for the for that game to work and so and that's the game that I'm playing if you will the game that I'm playing here there I, I had to create a certain level of complexity in order to begin to see um, the, the figures that has to be a certain degree of messiness otherwise no no figures begin to emerge or begin to become visible but they're becoming quite visible now. I don't, I'm assuming you're tracking with me. You can see what's going on. Um, that one, I, mean, I saw right. I saw you a comment about adding color. Oh, absolutely. But the color comes late, not early. I did. I did hints of color again, just to help get me started. And they'll, they'll probably stay like this one. Will probably continue to be in blue and in red. But the pop comes much, much later than this. I don't start with pop. That would be a that would be a mistake. Changed my mind there. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and change something right here, and just so I don't forget. I want that that man is standing with his legs apart, which is the exception rather than the rule, and with his um, arms, uh, uh, hands on his hips. So I, I, again, the, the main thing I want you to see here is the process, the picture in the clouds process of make a mess and allow the mess to suggest things to you. Now, this person, this woman right here, boy, she's like skinny head, skinny head, skinny head. <laughs> That's what all the French call her. And skinny body. She's a uh, she. She wears a number negative five dress, which is ridiculous. So there. Now and she's she's facing to our left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and this person. I just again. I just oh, I just. The way it feels, again, playing this abstract game, the way it feels like, like, oh, there he is. That's how I feel. It's like all of a sudden I go, oh, now I can see him. Okay, so I, I, it's very possible that my approach to <laughs> doing figures is very unconventional. You might not find anybody else who does it that way. I'm not trying to be unusual. Um, it, it just turns out that way often. I like, uh, I, I gotta tell you, here, let me pick you up and take you on a tour. So I'm, how many layers? Six layers in, something like that. Let me just show you then what's going on. Uh, number one, I love the way this guy right here is leaning in. I love the way this person, this man is leaning in, but he, his wife or woman is leaning back against him. So she's gonna be in front of him. That's kind of an accident. I love the way this person, I think it's a woman, uh, looks like she's leaning against the wall. And this woman right here, she's holding, going to be holding a drink in her arms, and she's leaning against the wall that way. I mean, that is a really, this person just barely in the picture, and of course there's one over here, but we don't worry about him. Uh, and again, there's almost no leg stuff down here, but I'll fix that later. I like that grouping. Over here, I have a man facing straight toward us, and behind him, a woman in red right there, and then a woman in blue uh, facing three quarters to our left. That's nice. Here's a man with his hands on his hips and a woman in perfect profile. Please understand that all of this happened. That here's a man three quarters facing to the left and another woman in profile. All of those figures emerged by accident. I, I hope that that is obvious to you. That that I didn't connive, and and, and that's. See, I feel like this, this approach, why do I do this random, unplanned approach? The answer is because I think I end up with more interesting 
figures than I would have if I planned very carefully. All right, now I'm gonna just what what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do next? Um, I'm just gonna start over here on the left and start defining a little bit. So I have this woman in purple is kind of leaning against her man. And should she have a dress all the way, you know, long dress, long dress, short dress, skirt, different colored skirt. Um, I don't know. So I'm going to be safe and simple at the moment. It's going to take purple all the way down. Pick up some. Pick up some um, phthalo blue. <laughs> you guys hear that voice? dress um, I like I like this woman who's leaning uh, against the wall and she's got long sleeves on and yeah dress, dress to just below the knee but she looks good got another blue woman over here woman in blue profile now her face is she's got a donkey face at the moment but we're, we're gonna fix that no donkey faces were invited to the wedding I promise you all right <laughs> mentioned earlier that I you know I put down a real simple color early on uh, and many times the most interesting effects are achieved by doing alternate colors on top of the color that, that was already there does that make sense many times the most fascinating things and that that is a more accurate actually a more accurate reflection of the clothing that people wear um, because most people are not wearing uh, monochromatic clothing. That is to say, their entire outfit is one color. And that's, that's sort of what's happening right now. Red, blue, green, blue, red, purple. Um, but I am almost certainly going to be coming back to all those figures and, and adding... For instance, I've got this dirty green on my brushes right now. I'm going to change this woman's skirt. Now she's now it's not a dress; it's a blouse and a skirt. Still looks good, but looks more more realistic. And of course, not all the men are wearing black. Most, you know, a lot of suits are dark, not black necessarily, but a lot of suits are dark. But right here I have two suits, one right in front of the other, that are both the same color. So let's change the color of this one here. Again, what I, what I would love for you to catch in this is the process, overall big picture process. Make messes, make messes. I usually do much of this in the acrylic stage, and, and that makes me happier. I'm, it's a little more challenging to do it all in oil, but okay. All right, I think now I'm ready for 
another layer of flesh tone. So I'm mixing up I'm, I'm, I'm for the third time now, because I've done two layers of flesh tone, this is my third. So slightly lighter and slightly brighter. Yellow ochre, oxide of red, titanium white. Do not be taking notes on that. You, you do this, you paint, you mix colors by sense of smell, not by recipe. Sorry to be mean to somebody. Stop taking notes on color notes. It could stunt your growth as an artist. All right, now let's look for, okay, this one right here, this arm is going up, and not, it was almost, it looked like it was, so there, she's got a bare elbow, and I like her hands there, and before I forget, I'm going to draw a glass in her hands. Oh, I didn't do any pencil on this. I, I meant to do that and usually do. Okay, this woman, again, she's sort of leaning against the wall. Oh, let me jump ahead and tell you an a important um, rule, I guess. All rules can be broken, but, and that is, um, generally speaking, with this level of abstraction, um, facial features are over the line, with the possible exception of a horizontal dark mark representing the, the bridge of the nose and the eye sockets, generally speaking. Okay, so just, just to let you know. Now, this woman doesn't have any arms. She has nice legs now. <laughs> that sounded funny. Um, because I don't know what to do with her. I don't know where her arms are. Looks like she's got one right on her tummy. I wonder, can I, I'm going to experiment here. I'm just going to make this arm go straight down. And her husband or man, whatever it is, this might be a first date, you never know. Or maybe they just met a few minutes ago. But he's coming on strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got his arm, hand on her upper arm. I kind of like that. that. That's sweet. I like this woman. There we go. Yeah, her, her right leg is bent. I'll come back and oh no, let me do it right now. I'm gonna add some dra some the, the knee, the thigh. Okay, do you see that now? I just just appear little by little. Um, she needs just a little more width. Okay, hey, speaking talking about speaking of adding some width to a woman. This is this is important, and I I teach this. All the time when you're painting, f figures, and, and what I mean by that, this is not figurative painting. You understand that, right? This is this is landscape painting. Although in this case, the the landscape is inside a house. This is landscape painting with figures in it. That's that's a big difference. There's a big difference between that and figurative painting. Okay, this, this is not that. This is not figure to painting. Um, if you're doing figure to painting, you can, you can paint any shape human being you want to. Because you're painting particular, specific human beings. When I'm painting a crowd like this, that is so weird. I don't know why my microphone is not working. Um, when I'm painting a crowd like this, I'm not trying to indicate any particular person. I'm trying to indicate, if you will, general humanity. Kind of, you know, people is is the right the right way to put that. Not not Sally, or 
Mary Margaret, just or Bill or Theodore. I'm just painting, you know, people. So when you're doing that, um, and, and I'm quite emphatic about this, and not everybody got has got this memo yet. I need more. Turns out I need more dark stuff. So I'm gonna mix up another batch of dark. Um, when you're painting, you know, people. By that I mean not specific, not Aunt Maud. You're just painting abstract general people. You do not paint realistic figures. You paint idealistic figures. In other words, you paint heroic or model-esque. You paint skinny people. You do not paint, unless you're trying to make an impression, unless you're trying to say, no, no, this was, this, this, all the people in this, in this uh, wedding were from the retirement center. And they, they were all in their 80s and 90s, which they weren't. You understand them? That is not. Unless you're doing that, unless you're, you're making a point of saying, no, 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 no. What I'm, I'm trying to show you, this was the old folks' ball. If you're doing that, then yes, you can make them old and chunky. But otherwise, and I'm certainly not doing that in this, I'm certainly not trying to show just showing, trying to indicate ordinary people, ordinary crowd of people. In that case, you paint, again, idealized or heroic people. In other words, like mannequins in the store window. In other words, get over it. Unless <laughs> you want to be a bad painter, you paint skinny people. You might say, well, that does, that's not realistic. Going, if you put chunky, ordinary Americans in your painting that are typical average, people are going to look at your figure and say, um, I, don't, I don't get it. Who's that? Who are those people? What do you mean? Because it, it will look as though you're trying to render specific, particular people. Does that make sense? I'm not sure I'm doing a good job of describing that, but and certainly that is not what we are doing. This is just guests at the wedding. This is not particular guests at the wedding. If you're doing particular guests, then everything I'm saying now is out the window. Yeah, you could do tall, fat, short, skinny people, whatever you want to do. But if you just want to indicate, you know, people, then you do ideal, idealized figures. And get, that's, that's, those figures right there are just about all done. I don't want to get too detailed so that I have to, you know, I have to explain. I don't have to explain too much here. Just want it to look like guests. You glance at them and then your eyes go back to the bride and groom. That's what I want. That's what I want to happen, especially the bride. One of the very last steps, one of the very last things that I'm going to do, I'm not quite there yet, I'm a couple of steps from it. One of the very last things that I'm going to do with these figures is, uh, in fact, practice what I was preaching earlier about any anytime you get the chance, look for excuses to negative paint objects. That is to say, don't paint the thing, paint the stuff around the thing. So that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, one of the last things I'm going to do is carve um, uh, carve these people by painting what's behind them. Make sense? Not 
pretty cheap about that one in right there. So, uh, by the way, how long do you have? You know, how long can I keep messing with these figures? The answer is till I'm happy with them. Now, that is to be balanced with, you know, how do you know when you're done? Or how many people does it take to do a painting? This whole joke. The answer is two. One to paint, one to shoot them. Because the painter doesn't know when to quit. So somebody has to shoot him before he thinks he's done. Because he actually is done, he just doesn't realize it yet. That's an old painting joke. A old artist joke. Now you know it. Well, you guys are kind of violent, aren't you? Watch out for them artists. They don't need much. Almost, almost had too much detail. Um, before I go any further, this this pencil is a little bit for rendering, for similitude. Mostly, it's just for texture. My my figures that I that you've been watching me paint, they were entirely too smooth compared to the rest of the painting because the rest of the painting does in fact have pencil scratching in it. And uh, up until then, my my um, my figures here did not. So I'm just trying to bring the figures up, up to match the style of the rest of the painting. And some of this pencil will remain, some of it will be covered up. I, I just like the way the, I like the way the scratchy uh, pencil lines look. Oh, look, somebody just showed up back there behind that one. How about that? <laughs> He's just barely showed up. Not at the last minute. Who invited him? Yeah. Also, again, much, much e better, easier to do this with two hands than one because your brain can keep up with one hand, but it can't quite keep up with two hands. Wow, that was a big help. That was a big improvement right there. Um, okay. Next thing, pretty easy. I'm gonna go in now and, and hit pop, pop up some of those colors. So I've got two women in red, one right here, one back there. I don't want them both wearing the same color red, so let's deal with one first. Picking up some Scarlet Lake, a little bit of Naples yellow, add to that to make it not too bright, still kind of a dirty red. Um, see that? Now, a diff very different color red for this woman over here. Raspberry. Add some something to it. I'm not sure even sure what that color is. Doesn't matter. All right. And I've got a purple woman here in purple, so going from raspberry to purple is a nice easy transition. Don't even have to clean my brushes, just pick up some oxyzine violet and again a little bit of white. I assume you understand what it is I'm doing here. I'm reinforcing the color that I put on a way long time ago with a lighter, brighter, more intense, higher chroma and, and lighter version of the color that, that I put on them earlier. Whoops. That lady ended up way too solid, if you will. Solid purple, so I messed it up with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I still don't like your too much purple. So I'm picking up some ultramarine. Let's, let's put a different colored skirt on her. Slightly different. There we go. That's better. Now I've got blue on my brushes. So let's slap down some blue here and there. stairwell and at the base of the stairs. One of the things that I very much enjoy when I'm doing uh, wedding paintings or when I'm painting at a festival is uh, my figures are abstract enough that always people come up to me always and say, where am I? And I look at whatever they're wearing and <laughs> usually there's somebody that's like, that's you. And they get a big kick out of that. Doesn't have to be very realistic to, to pull off that, that little trick. Brushes down, brushes are all messed up with blue paint. And, um, okay, now I'm going to do some light colored stuff and completely out of titanium white. So, hang on for a second. And I see lots of chats happening over there. I can't wait to get back to you guys and see what, you're, what you've said. Um, yeah, some some light hints of light clothing. So I'm mixing up a very dull gray, not very bright at all, but just one tick brighter than what I mixed up earlier, which is even dirtier gray. So this is slightly lighter than that. It looks pretty light on that canvas. Wow, it looks pretty dark on my. And um, so I have a number of men wearing coats and ties. Not all the shirts are white, of course, but it's a, it's an eminently uh, ignorable feature that is not many people would look at that and say, "Wait a minute! All the men weren't wearing white shirts." That, that won't happen. The, their eye will see it and go, oh, men with ties, men with coats and ties. You see, they won't process. And I think, generally speaking, that's better than starting to add colored shirts to the men. All right, now, I mean, dresses with a bit of white down the front, that's a, and maybe even a, yeah. I think that's all. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do before I start carving by painting the background people, people in the background, yeah, in the, in the middle. before I start carving the people by painting what's behind them, the last thing I'm going to do, at least today, I, I, all of this is subject to you know, further editing tomorrow, of course, but I'm mixing up flesh tone again. So it's, again, slightly lighter than the last time. And just looking for places where I can add a little bit of flesh, 
colored. <laughs> By the way, little detail. This kind of thing happens a lot. Let me, and I think it's it's where I have two figures, two women standing close to each other that are in almost identical poses. This woman's facing us a little more. She's in profile. But they both have their arms in this position. Um, it turns out that people in a crowd, and if, especially if they're standing among friends, I've discovered this a lot when I'm painting festivals, thousands of people going by. Um, friends uh, tend to strike the same pose as, as one another. Especially if they're walking down the street. Our friends will often actually begin to walk in step with each other. And I often indicate that a, a little bit, even a little bit in my in my groupings of the people here. There one woman doing this. This blonde here. This group, the blonde in the crowd. Believable. Alright, that is enough of that. Let's get some clean brushes. And let's look for some places to carve. Not too much. Just a little bit. I'm going to start with this. Um, people standing in front of the, the distant window over here. So I'm make, trying to mix up this color right there. Okay, it's kind of a dirty aqua. I carved this guy's head. He's got kind. Of, I don't know what kind of hairstyle you call that, but it's a little bit over the top. So I've just carved his head down a little bit, and while I'm at it, I'm going to add just same thing to her, carve her head down a little bit, um, and add a little bit of light from that that window or doorway, whatever it is out there. Right? That's the only place I think where that color is used. So I'm going to put those brushes down. Oh, I can do a little bit behind this one here. There we go. Oh yeah, and some reflection. Okay, ah, that's nice. I'm gonna mix up a lighter version of that because that's that's the old rule, you know. Put down when you're when you're in the world of when you're in the realm of um, opaque paint, you put down a color and then you come back usually right away so you don't forget and add a little bit of slightly lighter on top of that. Now your question might be, well, can you do that twice? And the answer is absolutely, you can. Usually two at least. I mean, do, you know, do two layers like I just did. But you don't need to do more than that. All right, I'm not gonna waste your time cleaning brushes. Uh, two more clean brushes. Let's come over, move over here now. I already carved those people one time, but it's likely that they can use a second second uh, layer of defining, second stage of carving. Plus, I, w I definitely want to um, uh, bring in some warm light. I'm going to move you guys so I, I won't forget to move you because you're horribly in my way. <laughs> That'll help me not, not to forget. All right. So I've got a dirty orange. Again, this woman's head can be carved down. That's good. Ah, a little under the chin. Um, making these, uh, these, the edges of these people soft is really uh, a good idea. Um, 
few tiny hints of hard edge. By the way, what am I doing right now? Look last broadcast. Always be looking for an excuse for punctiliar light because the human human beings are inexorably drawn to points of light, to punctiliar light. Uh, um, the soft edges on people um, gives the, look at this guy, he's got this really, almost a cone head. Now he's a bald guy, but hey, we like bald guys around here. It looks like me. Just to add a little bit of a beard, a goatee, and he's me. Um, always be looking for excuses. Oh, no, that's not Royce. I was talking about soft edges. Um, the soft edges give the connotation of movement. It makes the people look like they're alive, not stiff. And that's a good thing. All right, so there's a bunch of opaque, same color, orange. Therefore, what do you do? Therefore, you mix up a... Go ahead and do it right now before you forget. <laughs> mix up a batch of slightly lighter dirty orange. Does it make sense? Let's see if that's, yep, that's about the right color. And you, it doesn't, it almost doesn't matter at all where you put this lighter color. It doesn't have to have any rhyme or reason. It just goes on top of what you just put down. that nice okay while I'm over here then while I've got while I've got some dirty orange on my brushes I'm just gonna go ahead and mix up brown Fairly dark. I'm trying to match the background down here. Don't anybody ask me, so what colors do you use to get a dirty brown? You should have learned that in about third grade. Because <laughs> the answer is, at any time, all you do is mix all your colors together. And they become a dirty, mousy, gray brown. So... A bunch of stuff together until it starts looking the color you want. <laughs> All right. Um, I want it slightly lighter. Perfect. Slightly lighter than what's already there. So again, carving up these 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 figures. Are you seeing it? Now I probably on a painting on people this abstract I probably will not indicate shoes or feet at all. I might come back tomorrow and change my mind but at the moment I'm, I'm not thinking that I'll do anything about shoes or feet just to leave them perfectly abstract one dot a better dot bit so I can come in here at the in front of this woman's a little bit she's got a she's got a halo and she's almost yeah she needs some messing up here there I think that's all right There we go. 
little bit of a bum. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Tuck the waist. It's all, it, when you're doing women, it's almost always, almost always works to do just a little tuck, little extra nip at the waist. In fact, I'm going to do that here on the woman in purple. I'm mixing up a dart or something. Watch if I just, yep, tuck her right there. Now, now she looks like a female figure. Again, idealized figure, not realized figure, not literal figure. All right, I'm pretty happy with all those people over there. Let's come over here now. And uh, let's see if I've got any place for this mid tone brown. Oh, yeah, this guy's head. Perfect color. Because it's the color of the background. It's some of his shoulder. I might come back and do just a tiny bit of um, of um, a, a, a sparkle to represent glasses. Just a, just a speck of of um, light or white. Just, just some literal sparkle, as if they were holding glasses. We can hardly even see the glass, but we'll see the, we'll see the sparkle that it, that it, it creates. And I'm mixing up in, again a darker, but opaque, but but uh, opaque brown, dark, 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 to to carve these people a little bit. So I'm trying to match this dark brown color that's in between. Figures. Does that make sense? I want, I want to mix up an opaque version that's just slightly lighter than what's already there. Like this, okay? There you go. So, yep. Again, a little bit of a tuck on that woman's waist. Actually, on her bum also. there in the raspberry dress, she just suddenly grew an arm. She's much happier about it now too. Okay. I'm going to go in the next one. Just going back to up. So you can see the whole painting. Generally, I'm pretty happy with that, that crowd of people. I hope, I hope that was fun and insightful for you. I'll look at your chats here in just a minute. flesh tone, just a, a few little bits here and there. 
this one look better if her dress came down. There we go. That's nice. And likewise, she looked better. There we go. That's nice. Last thing I'm going to do, at least today, and then we'll wrap this up, is um, some sparkle, as I said, sparkle on the, as if they're holding glasses. So I'm mixing up from just a slightly dirty white. Nope, I need to warm that up. That's the light in this quite warm so there we go so a horizontal mark scratch and I don't I don't know if they were holding wine shaped glasses surely they must have been and this guy's obviously holding a glass as is this woman here so this is kind of fun um, I'd certainly have just oh like that now, now this man here he was holding his wife's arm he or whatever his woman's arm he is no longer now he's holding a glass just a tiny bit more believable um, I think that the act of holding glasses like this at a wedding is so ubiquitous that our our eyes with just the faintest of hints see look at that all of a sudden, it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> the whole place is holding glasses, ready to toast the bride and groom. That, that's sweet. That was that was easy, wasn't it? That was so easy. That was fun. Um, I'm gonna pick you up just for a second as I wrap up, and then so that you can see. So there is the you if you've been watching this broadcast you've seen the whole process from beginning to end um, abstracting loose abstract I reserve the right to modify edit these tomorrow or the next time I work on it which might be tomorrow I'm gonna do a glaze over the entire painting and any colors that I so choose and then a follow-up with wiping off areas like I'll probably glaze over her and then wipe almost everything off so it has to be dry of course and uh, and then at just adding any highlights that I so desire and of course anything else as well but I, I'm quite happy with the uh, the effect there and again when an artist says he's quite happy please believe me I'm not bragging I'm going whoo glad that worked out all right, let me see what you guys have been saying. Marlene, good to have you again. Response to 237. How about with being an introvert? <laughs> Jungian theory is introverts are introspective, focusing just on the inner world of ideas and impressions. True. I thought you were going to go a different way with it. There's a book called Quiet. Um, let me look it up real quick. It, it, the shake rattled and rolled my world. This woman read my mail. Q U I E T. I think, I think we can get it just by, uh, yeah, quiet. That by, um, who is it by? Quiet, the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking. Um, by Susan Kane. There we go. Um, related subject they've done longitudinal studies infants that are high reactive that is late baby days weeks months old lying in a crib and they make a noise left or right the baby that goes <laughs> reacts highly is probably gonna grow up to be an introvert because they're sensitive to stuff sensitive to everything whereas the not high reactive babies grow up to be extroverts because they live the world, they live life this way. I am the one that brings energy to the atmosphere. Whereas introverts are receiving the atmosphere, which I think is part of the reason why 
so many of us, so many introverts tend to be artistic because we're literally sensitive. Funny, you got me on a tangent now. For years, for decades, I resisted that label. Oh, you're an artist. Oh, you're sensitive. Because <laughs> it sounded like they, you know, the, the accusation was, you know, you're going to start crying at the drop of a hat. And I didn't like that characterization. So I didn't consider myself sensitive at all. Over the years, that has all completely changed. I now realize I am, in fact, very sensitive. I'm a musician as well. Not a big surprise. A lot of mus musicians and artists, there's a lot of overlap there. And it, it is because we're sensitive. And it's taken me a long time to learn that most people in the world do not see the world the way I see it. And related to that, if we're sitting in a car driving, say, west, and there's a beautiful sunset, I am the one that will say, wow, look at that sunset. And most people are now go, uh-huh, and back to whatever they were doing, right? Or driving down the road, and I've got... Leonard Bernstein's, Leonard Bernstein's Candied Overture finale on. And I'm going, oh, listen to that. And most of the people in the crowd in the car will go, uh-huh. Or to use it to Leanne Rhymes, uh, when it comes to when it when you get the chance to dance or sit it out, I hope you'll dance. And I'll listen to that, get tears in my eyes, go, oh. What a great song. That message goes right, and I go, oh, that is, what a great song. I use two examples of classical and country, just to give you a breath of, I'm the sensitive one. Turns out I really am sensitive to everything. So interesting, Marlene, I like your comment there. Um, this is why your tutorials are so special. Thank you, bless you, I appreciate that. Right, I don't know if you're still with us or not. Um, but I hope I hope I satisfied you with the color left and right. You were exactly correct, by the way. You were exactly correct. And Isabi Dembski, thanks. Good to have you on board. That's a new name. Welcome. Um, Marlene, it's helpful. My current painting is of the small town train to forward. People waiting. Excellent. Marlene, I look forward to seeing some of your paintings. Isabi Dembski, I use one hand. <laughs> what well, most people do. <laughs> I don't know if you're still watching. I invite you to try too. Two seems efficient. Nice mirroring strokes. <laughs> Marlene, yeah, look for quiet. What fun, you guys. I was downstairs between between broadcasts just a little while ago talking, having a nice <laughs> catch up with my wife. Um, we have eight people, uh, seven other people living in the house besides us, so catch up is a good word. Um, and telling her you know, how much I enjoy your company. Um, it's not paying the bills. By the way, feel free to send me a couple bucks on on um, uh, what's it called? Patreon. <laughs> Feel free. Horatio struck a good example. No pressure, though. You know that. You know that. But anyway, um, you know why do I keep doing this if I'm not being paid anything to do it? Heck, the I know. I think it's because I enjoy your company. That, that is the truth. So, so I actually do know. All right. I guess since I've talked to you for a few minutes, I've seen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This woman. This woman's world just expanded. <laughs> that is to say, her. Uh, there, much better, much better. There we go. Much better. All right, great fun. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. You know, most of you guys have, obviously, because you're all old friends. Um, glad it was helpful, Marlene. Uh, give it a whirl. Look forward to seeing your stuff. All right, thanks. That's it for today. Well, maybe. Maybe. I'm down to the hot garage now to paint my 6 by 6 foot cityscape. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.